It's been almost four years since the first video in the F around and find out series, in which I tried to make a case class that keeps the exact type of one of its parameters. We had this person case class, and uh, there was a name field, and I wanted to pass something like a John string literal, which has its own literal type, and I wanted to still have that type in the p name, you know, like as part of the case class. Uh, created. I wanted it to just keep that type in the type signature so that we can then do things with it. Why that might be or might not be beneficial to you in your daily life, I do not know. I do have one recent use case where this could have been useful, and I will show you that use case. Uh, but for now, let's just try to kind of get back to this. Can we do this today? And it turns out we can. There's a new experimental flag in Scala 372, which we are going to use to actually make this happen. So bear with me. We will take this project as it was four years ago, and I'll update all the dependencies so that it actually kind of works, and we will move forward this new thing, or at least we are going to try to, because this is the F around and find out series in which I try things and maybe they don't always succeed. I will still commit to making that a video and publishing it for you to enjoy and learn from. So we will start with SBT. This is a pretty old version. We are now at like 1.11.4, if I'm not mistaken. And for the Scala version, instead of 301, we'll go 3.7.2. That's the latest Scala Next version. We also have a compiler plugin uh, called better to string which I had made, but now is published as part of org polyvariant. And it's at this version. So now if we import that, we should be ready to go with uh, these changes and kind of achieve our goal finally after four years. Ignore this warning and we go back to the main class. So uh, what we tried to do was kind of like we create a person like this and this type, as you can see, P, uh, which is the instance of our case class, is just person. It does not have this precise type. So uh, if I wanted to do something like uh, some example like p name and make sure that uh, it's this string literal that does not work so we have this new keyword but for it to work we will need to import an experimental flag if you're watching this in the future and it's like scala 3.8 3.9 or whatever this might already be working without an import so just make sure uh, you don't do it for no reason uh, it's an experimental flag and it's called modularity uh, once we import that, we can actually mark this name field as tracked. Now it's actually just the syntax highlighting complaining about this. It's a uh, scalameta and bloop, but uh, if we try to, uh, you know, run uh, this module, uh, yeah, okay, I still need the, the val. But now it compiles, it just doesn't run. So let's run, uh, compile in a loop. Uh, yeah, it compiles now, it compiled before, but it didn't compile at this line, which means something has changed. So if we restore this, uh, we just have to ignore this. The tooling has not caught up with the uh, experimental flags yet, so Metals is still uh, kind of mad about this line, but we care about this line. So it is now just a warning about a pure expression that does nothing, and that's for a good reason, because pname, um, if we look at the type alone, it should tell us something more precise. I'm not sure why it's not saying that in the highlighting, but it, it, the compiler still knows it's this literal. If I use something else, it is not gonna work. Uh, so yeah, it's just this precise type. And maybe we can see it in the error message. Yeah, it tries to show that this P name, which is a John string, yeah, it doesn't conform to that. Uh, so with that, what's the type of P? It's actually person with a you know, re type refinement, val name equals John. If I change this to something else, like Johnny, uh, now I also have to update the type signature. And this is really cool, but why is it useful? Well, things like this, this f p person, which extracts p name type, that should also uh, be aware what the name is. And that is, you know, in this case, again, the, the John. If I use something else, it's not gonna work. If I also don't provide a precise type signature, it's also going to kind of discard this information. And if I let it uh, infer, now it's fine because it's a final val, uh, but in some contexts, you will still find that you need the final keyword to kind of infer a singleton type. And this would be the case if we just have name equals this. Right now it's a string. So if I pass name here, 
we lost this type information. So we need to make this a final val, which is kind of like making it a constant uh, that yeah, just gives it a singleton type. Okay, so this works. Uh, we're basically at the state I wanted to be in uh, four years ago, minus the broken highlighting, uh, the, the error message, which is kind of a false positive. But why is this useful? Uh, first of all, it's not just the apply method that is affected by this, it's also the copy method. So if we make a new person, someone like p copy name equals, like, let's use my name this time, and now it's actually going to still have that. So that's really nice. And if we start with like a person that just had a string, like the type of the parameter was, was just a string, nothing more precise, as the output of the copy, we still have the more typed one uh, referring to my name. And this can be useful in a variety of places. Consider a case class that holds some number of keys. And this is going to be just like, yeah, values. Well, okay, uh, I'm not gonna mix keys and values. I think uh, many of you will, and myself included, will just get confused by that. So we're gonna say uh, keys list of string. Let's say I have a function that like validates uh, keys and returns, I don't know, either string or throwable or keys. And we're actually going to do something like this. We're gonna check for the keys emptiness. If it's empty, we're gonna fail with a left. If it's not empty, we're gonna do a right. Uh, now what I would like to have is make this validation actually kind of enforce non-emptiness on the type level of the types that we're dealing with. So it turns out that tract is actually perfect for, for this case. We're gonna say tract val keys. And now even the parser is not complaining because it complains about the previous error. And we can actually make, you know, a copy where keys is like, uh, okay, we cannot check this with just is empty. We will have to pattern match. So we can pattern match on this. And if it's nil um, on keys, if it's nil, we're gonna have either left with some exception, or if it's head and something else, we can do right. Uh, keys copy or just make a new one like let's assume there are other fields in here as well right uh, like yeah, extra string so we can make a copy and make keys equal to uh, head and next let me just make sure this is the right type no this actually widens the type but there is a you know colon colon uh, or cons type so we can uh, do Head text like this. Now I can actually type my thing as keys with val keys, uh, a cons of string. Now let's say I have a main and I have some init keys uh, for validation. I'm gonna have keys with like a list of A and B and this extra C. Uh, I know this is not empty, but I want to validate it so that my types know this. So I will validate my init keys and uh, let's do like a for each uh, so on, the, on the right side. And now you see this is, this is typed well. So validated keys here is guaranteed, like the, the keys here are gonna be a non-empty list of strings. And there's not gonna be any kind of warning here about like a non-exhaustive pattern match, which would be, or like, you know, like the type matches, okay? If I use the original one, which is just list of string, that does not fit the super type. It's, it's not a subtype of cons of string, but the validated keys is a subtype of that, which means I can basically treat it as a non-empty list, like from cats now. So I can do like a match, and I actually don't have to consider the nil case. I just consider this, and it's not giving me any kind of match, you know, pattern match exhaustivity warning, which wouldn't be the case if I did that, use the original. I think this is really cool because it unlocks yet another way for us to design type safe APIs, uh, because where it matters, we can kind of make our arguments tracked uh, instead of doing like more, possibly more complex things, such as making this a higher kinded type, making keys parameterized on a type constructor and having like an F of string. This is kind of more viral and it forces you to make a decision everywhere on what your type is. Like here it would be list and here it's gonna be uh, maybe a cons or maybe a non-empty list 
from cats. So uh, yeah, I think this is kind of more lightweight and can be useful in a more general variety of scenarios. So yeah, this is it. This is all I wanted to show really and kind of give you this, this new tool that you may want to be using, uh, but probably you wanna wait until it becomes non-experimental in order to use it in a real application. So for now, let's just keep it to the demos, to just POCs and things we're going to experiment with. But for anything stable, you probably wanna wait a little bit more because we don't know how this feature will evolve. The tooling is not ready for it yet, as you can see, but still, I think it's really exciting. It's one of the things, the few things that I have been excited about in terms of Scala's new features. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think, uh, if you have any kind of ideas for a use case for this. And uh, if you liked this video and if you want to see more of these kind of experiments, uh, let me know everything. If you want to, you can even tell me about your favorite type of tea. Uh, anything goes in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.